After reading the problem, what you want to do next, of course, is draw a detailed picture, a labeled picture. We've done that already. We have the altitude of the airplane equaling five kilometers, the angle of elevation we have called theta, and then this horizontal distance along the ground we have called x. So this is going to be our labeled diagram. The next thing we would want to do is write down some of the given information. They tell us that the angle of elevation is equal to pi over three in this particular moment. So we're gonna say theta is equal to pi over three. They also tell us that the angle is decreasing at a rate of pi over six radians per minute. The key word there is rate. Whenever a question tells you about a rate, what they're telling you is how fast something is changing, whether it's getting bigger or smaller. And when you write down that given information, because it is a rate, you have to use derivative notation. So for example, the angle is changing at that rate, we would say d theta dt. That is the notation to indicate a rate of change. This angle is decreasing, so it's actually going to be negative pi over six. And then the unit was radians per minute. And then the question is asking us, of course, how fast is the plane traveling at that time? What you want to notice is the plane, of course, is traveling horizontally. It's traveling to the right. And as the plane travels to the right, this distance right here is going to be increasing. You can imagine as the plane moves forward, x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the way to symbolize how fast the airplane is traveling would be to symbolize how fast x is changing, because x will change at the same rate that the airplane is changing. So in other words, the speed of the airplane can be symbolized by dx dt, and that is our unknown. So we drew our picture, we listed our known values very carefully. Now we need an equation that relates our variables to one another, and there's a couple of possibilities in this case, but the most efficient possibility turns out to be the cotangent function. The cotangent of an angle, we recall, is the reciprocal of the tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. So with that in mind, we look at our picture. We can see that 5 is opposite of the angle, and x is adjacent to the angle. So we can write our cotangent equation as follows. We can say cotangent of theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is x, and then put that over 5. Now x over five, I prefer to write that as one fifth x, helps me take the derivative a little more easily in just a moment. So there's our equation that relates our variables. The next thing we need to do is differentiate this equation. We need to find the derivative, but we're doing the derivative with respect to time in this problem. So you have to do this very carefully. Let's take a look at what we mean. When you do the derivative of cotangent of theta, you might remember that that was negative cosecant squared of theta but we're going to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now the inside is theta, but we're doing the derivative with respect to time, so this simply means we're gonna multiply by d theta dt. So you always have to make sure you're including that extra term with your variable, d theta dt or dy dt, et cetera, whatever your variable happens to be. Over here we have 1 fifth x. Again, we're doing the derivative with respect to time. The derivative of 1 fifth x would just be 1 fifth, but then we have to employ the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of x with respect to time. So that would be the correct derivative right there. At this point, we might go ahead and just plug in the known values here. So we're gonna have negative cosecant squared of our angle, which was pi over three, multiplied by d theta dt, which was negative pi over six, we are omitting units temporarily for clarity, and then this equals 1 fifth dx dt. Now to solve for dx dt, we could certainly multiply both sides of the equation by five over one, or just five if you prefer. That will be useful because these fives cancel and those ones cancel. So now you have dx dt. The rest is just a little bit of arithmetic or trigonometric simplification. Where it might get dicey for some is figuring out what the cosecant squared of pi over three is. So let's talk about that. Cosecant, let's just do the cosecant first. So the cosecant of pi over three is the same thing as one over the sine of pi over three. Pi over three is 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees is root three over two. So you have one over 
root 3 over 2. This can be simplified by basically reciprocating. So this becomes 2 over root 3. So that would be your cosecant of pi over 3. But we want the cosecant squared. So what you would do is you would square both sides of this. And that would show you that the cosecant squared of pi over 3 is equal to 4 over root 9. Root 9 is just 3. So it's just 4 thirds. So that was a bit of a long story, but now we've got it. So we're going to have 5 multiplied by negative. Don't forget that negative sign there. 4 thirds. And then multiply that by another negative, but it's pi over 6 now. So we'll multiply all the numerators, 5 and 4 and pi, make 20 pi. So we're going to have 20 pi over 3 times 6 is 18. Notice we multiplied a negative by a negative, so it became positive. And we can simplify this just a little bit. Why don't we divide top and bottom by 2? So we get 10 pi over 9. Now we can go back and think about what the units would be. When I do the units, I look carefully at what I have in the numerator here, x, and then what I also have in the denominator, which is t. Now, x is a distance, and so that distance was measured in kilometers in this case. And then the time, I believe, was measured in minutes. Yeah, they said that the angle was changing in terms of minutes. So the unit of time in this problem would be minutes. So in other words, the 10 pi over 9 has units of kilometers per minute. That would become the correct answer to this question. If you need to express it as a decimal approximation, then you're going to get about 3.49 kilometers per minute would be the approximate speed of the airplane. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, no problem. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos nevertheless.